And hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another AP World History Modern AMSCO reading, where today we are reading Chapter 2.3, Exchange in the Midian Indian Ocean. And now, ladies and gentlemen, let's exchange some views and see you sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. Quote, Seek ye knowledge even to China, end quote. Haddeth, 19th century. Essential question. What were the causes and effects of the growth of networks of exchange after 1200? And how did environmental knowledge support that expansion? The saying from the Hadith, traditionally attributed to the Prophet Muhammad, provides guidance to Muslims, encouraging them to travel and learn. Following this advice, it is understandable that Dar al-Islam, literally the House of Islam, or is Muslim world, might be called the world's first global empire. It connected societies from North Africa to South Asia. Even before missionaries and imperial armies spread Islam around the world, Muslim merchants traveling to non-Muslim lands in search of trading partners were paving the way. In fact, Arab merchants had been traveling to South Asia for centuries before Islam began expanding. Muslim merchants' connections to Dar al-Islam interacted with developments in sailing technology and environmental knowledge to transform the Indian Ocean into an economic hotspot during the post-classical era. Causes of Expanded Exchange in the Indian Ocean South Asia, with its location in the center of the Indian Ocean, benefited enormously from the trade in the Indian Ocean Basin. Although some of the causes of expanded trade in the Indian Ocean Basin were the same as those of expanded overland routes, some related specifically to ocean travel and knowledge. Spread of Islam Although the Indian Ocean trade had existed as early as 200 BCE, the expansion of Islam connected more cities than ever before. Trading partners existed in East Africa, East and Southeast Asia, and South Asia. Muslim Persians and Arabs were the dominant seafarers and were instrumental in transporting goods to port cities across the Indian Ocean. Cities on the west coast of India, such as Calicut and Cambay, became thriving centers of trade due to interactions with merchants from East Africa and Southwest Asia. Calicut especially became a bustling port city for merchants in search of spices from southern India. Foreign merchants from Arabia and China met in Calicut to exchange goods from the West and the East, respectively. Local rulers welcomed the presence of Muslim and Chinese merchants as it brought the city wealth and prominence in the Indian Ocean Basin. Increased demand for specialized products As the Indian Ocean trade grew, so did the demand for specialized products. Every region involved in trade had something special to offer its trading partners. India became known for the high quality of its fabrics, particularly in cotton. In addition, merchants traveled to India in search of meticulously woven carpets as well as high carbon steel used for knives and swords, tanned leather, and artisan crafted stonework. Merchants also sought pepper from India's southern coastal cities. Modern day Malaysia and Indonesia became known as the Spice Islands because of the fragrant nutmeg, cinnamon, cloves, and cardamom they exported. Slaves, ivory, and gold came from the Swahili coast cities of Mombasa, Magadishu, and Sofalala. China exported silks, and silk Chinese porcelain became evolved, coveted worldwide, which is why people in the West so refer to their fancier dishes as fine china. From Southwest Asia came horses, figs, and dates. Trade and enslaved people also played a role in exchanges in the Indian Ocean. While most Africans who were enslaved and transported to the Americas after 1500 came from West and Central Africa, they had been a long-running slave trade in the eastern part of the continent. By routes over land or in the Indian Ocean, slaves from Eastern Africa were sold to buyers in Northern Africa, the Middle East, and India. Many were transported to the islands off the southeast coast of Africa, such as Madagascar. The trade reached its peak in the 18th and 19th centuries. 
enslaved people taken in the Indian Ocean trade suffered fates different from those who were taken across the Atlantic. Slaves in the Indian Ocean trade were more normally to provide forced labor in seaports in the shipping industry and as household servants. Some worked as sailors or even soldiers. Living in towns or cities, they had more opportunity to develop communities and to work alongside free laborers than did enslaved people taken to the Americas. Slaves who ended up in Islamic communities had certain rights, such as the right to marry. As a result of the Indian Ocean slave trade, African words, musical styles, and customs can be found in Omen, India, and elsewhere. Environmental Knowledge Knowledge of monsoon winds were central for trading in the Indian Ocean in the winter months. Winds originated from the northeast, while in the spring and summer they blew from the southwest. Thus, merchants had to time their voyages carefully, often remaining in port cities for months at a time, depending on when favorable winds would come their way. Advances in Maritime Technology Travelers needed ships capable of navigating the Indian Ocean's winds. Arab sailors used sailing technology to aid their travel. It is debatable whether Arab sailors invented the triangular latin sail that they used, but the sails were popular because sailors found that the triangular shape could easily catch winds and coming from many directions. Chinese sailors during the classical period had invented the stern rudder, which gave their ship more stability and made them easier to maneuver. The small wooden duos used by Arab and Indian sailors dominated the seas during the post-classical era. Trade facilitated the rapid spread of sailing technology across the many lands bordering the Indian Ocean in this period. See Topic 4.1 for later Chinese maritime technology, such as the magnetic compass and improved rudder, which is all located in another playlist in another video that will be coming out soon. The astrolabe, improved by Muslim navigators in the 12th century, allowed sailors to determine how far north or south they were from the equator. Growth of States The trading networks in the Indian Ocean fostered the growth of states to help industrialize the revenue from in trade. One Muslim city-state, Malacca, also spelled Melaka, became wealthy by building a navy and by imposing fees on ships that passed through the Strait of Malacca, a narrow intellect that many ships' captains had used to travel between ports in India and ports in China. The Sultan of Malacca became so powerful in the 1400s that he expanded the state into Sumatra and the then southern Malay Peninsula, as in city-states in East Africa, Italy, and the Americas, Malacca's prosperity was based on trade rather than agriculture or mining or manufacturing. The Sultanate ended when the Portuguese invaded the city in 1511. The Portuguese hoped that by conquering the key city on the Strait of Malacca, they could control the trade that flowed through it between Europe, India, and China. They were successful enough to generate great wealth for their empire. However, they were less successful than they had hoped. Their conquest touched off conflicts among the other states in the region and caused traders to diversify their routes and the ports they used. Effects of Expanded Exchange in the Indian Ocean Some of the very factors that cause expansionism in the, of exchange networks in the Indian Ocean also in time became effects. Diasporic Communities Without the arrival of merchants in distant lands, trade could not have expanded. As a natural result of waiting for favorable winds to travel, these merchants interacted with the surrounding cultures and peoples of the region. In fact, many Arab and East African merchants stayed in western Indian port cities permanently because they married women they met there. Arab and Persian merchants settled in East Africa, thus these merchants from Dar al-Islam were the first to bring Islam to Southern Asia, not through missionary work or conquest, but through intermarriage. Their children would generally be raised with Muslim traditions. Settlements of people away from their homeland are also known as a diaspora. In these communities, settlers introduced their own cultural traditions into the indigenous cultures. Those cultures, in turn, influenced the culture of the merchants. Diasporas arose through trade in many parts of the world. Merchants in Diaspora Community Merchant Community Muslim 
regions, China, India in ocean basin, Europe, products, silk, paper, porcelain, spices, gems, woods, gold, salt, ambers, furs. Merchant community, Chinese, regions, Southeast Asia, Africa, products, cotton, tea, silk, metals, opium, salt. Merchant community, Sogdian and Samarkand region, main caravan merchants along Silk Roads, China. Products, silk, gold, wine, linens. Merchant community, Jewish, China, India, Europe, where the regions. Products, glass beads, linens, dyes, and spices. Merchant community, Malay, region, Sri Lanka. Product, nutmeg, pepper, cloves. Response to increased demand. In a similar way, increased demand for products caused trade to expand. At the same time, however, it resulted in several effects with long-lasting impact. For example, to meet rising demand, producers needed to find ways to become more efficient, to grow more crops, to make more textiles, to manufacture more iron. In some places, the role of the state increased even more to oversee these efforts at efficiency and to raise money through customs, taxes on imported goods, and fees for the use of seaports. The Indian Ocean, sorry, the Western Indian Rajput kingdoms of Gujarat, for example, became the go-between for trade between the East and West. The revenue from customs in Gujarat was many times more than the entire worth of some European states. Swahili City-States The Indian Ocean trade also created thriving city-states along the east coast of Africa, sometimes known as the Swahili City-States. Swahili, which literally means coasters, refer to the inhabitants of bustling commercial centers such as Kilwa, Mombasa in modern Kenya, and Zanzibar in modern Tanzania. The traders of the Zanj coast, as it was known in Arabic, sold ivory, gold, and slaves to their Arab trading partners, as well as more exotic goods such as turquoise shells, peacock feathers, and rhinoceroses' horns. In exchange, the Zanj cities acquired Chinese porcelain, Indian cotton, and manufactured ironwork. Trade was so vigorous with East Asia that Chinese porcelain remains a common find among the ruins of Swahili cities. Trade brought considerable wealth to the cities on the East African coast. Agricultural ruins in Kilwa suggest the wealth and grandeur that once existed there. For example, most buildings had traditionally been constructed of mud and clay. However, at the Indian Ocean's trade height, many mosques and wealthy merchants' homes were made of stone or coral. Significant Cultural Transfers The transfer of knowledge, culture, technology, commerce, and religion intensified as a result of thriving trade in the Indian Ocean Basin. The voyages of the Muslim Admiral Zhang He, 1371-1433, reflect this transfer as well as the conflicts it sometimes generated. In 1405, the Ming Emperor Yongle sent Zhang He on the first of seven great voyages. Zhang He traveled to Indonesia, Ceylon, and other coastal areas on the Indian Ocean to Arabia and to the east coast of Africa as well as to the Cape of Good Hope. The main purposes of the voyages were to display the might of the Ming Dynasty to the rest of the world and to receive tribute from the people he encountered. Zhang's fleet was impressive. At its height, his fleet included more than 300 ships that carried 28,000 people. The voyages of Shanghai 1405 to 1433 is demonstrated on the map below what I just read. Along there, there are travel route of Zhang He as well as Ming Dynasty controlled territory. As you can see here, take a moment to look at the map. After all, I'll share some of my thoughts about all this at the end of the video. The expeditions won prestige for the Chinese government and opened up new markets for Chinese goods. Zhang He and his crew returned to China with exotic treasures such as the first giraffe the Chinese had ever seen. They also brought back a new understanding of the world beyond China's borders. The voyages inspired some to immigrate to ports in Southeast Asia and elsewhere. Zhang He's voyages stirred controversy. Though Confucianism 
promoted a stable, agrarian lifestyle, and scholars worried that greater interaction with trade with foreign cultures threatened China's social order. Some critics simply looked down upon other cultures, deeming them barbaric and vastly inferior to Chinese culture. Some thought the voyages were too expensive. Emperor Yango's successor, his son Zhu Geozo, the ended Zhang He's travels, and he also discouraged all Chinese from sailing away from China. To emphasize his point, he made building a ship with more than two masts a punishable offense. Zhang He's voyages did have one positive short-term result. They put a stop to pirate activities off the coast of China and in Southeast Asia. However, after China stopped sending armed merchant ships into the ocean, the pirate activities resumed, especially on the China Sea. Key Terms by Theme Government States Malacca Gujarat Swahili City States Economy Trade Calicut Spice Islands Environment Ocean Indian Ocean Basin Monsoon Winds Technology Sailing Latin Sails Stern Rudder, Astrolabe, Culture Disruptions and Transfers, Indian Ocean Slave Trade, Diaspora, Zhang He. And hey, ladies and gentlemen, that is it for today's video, and now on to my thoughts on the chapter. So, first thing I noticed in this chapter was it had definitely talked a lot about how Islam actually had spread through some peaceful means, meaning it was not always a violent means of spreading. Also, it kind of also gave a little bit of a, I guess you could say a prelude or a prologue to what would happen later down in the line in industrialization with how increased demand for specialized products would occur, which would kind of lead to supply and demand as it would later be termed or coined. So with supply and demand, basically it was a business thing that really kicked industrialization along further. Because basically what happened was that for industrialization, it needed a massive consumer culture. That's also kind of the, what was going on with capitalism as well. Because during industrialization and the Enlightenment, a lot there was a lot of thoughts on consumerism and spending, spending, you know. Even though mercantilism, which is also being demonstrated as well throughout the chapter, was present and in some degree, it was a heavy emphasis on supply and demand, buy, 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 sell, sell, sell. But also, we're also even getting a small demonstration of mercantilism, which is what we're going to be seeing, seeing in 1450 to 1750. And what mercantilism is basically, there's an economic pie in the world and everyone wants the biggest slice they can possibly get. However, they all have to share with slices in that pie. Even though personally, I prefer my apple pie, personally, in a pretty good plate, it's steaming hot right out of the oven. But that's just me. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the reading. I hope you hit the like button, and also hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. You can always subscribe, unsubscribe if it ever becomes an inconvenience, or and then hit the notification bell to stay up to date and when I post more content. Anyways, aside from a couple other thoughts I may have, being that aside from this having some bits of being a sort of prologue to industrialization, if you guys want to read about that or take a look, you can also buy this chapter or the textbook online actually it's called AP World History Modern AMSCO it's a giant textbook you can buy it on Amazon places like Amazon for example um, I'll actually hopefully put a link in the description soon but I hope you all have a great day have an amazing night as well it's depending on what time it is for you guys and remember ladies and gentlemen to stay safe stay happy and stay entertained with episode 2.4 coming up right in five seconds and counting